This unit is all about aromatic and heteroaromatic compounds. These are very practically important organic compounds that contain conjugated systems that are particularly stable. And we'll learn the molecular origins of this, why aromatic compounds are so darn stable in this unit. We'll focus on structure here, moving eventually into reactions of aromatic and heteroaromatic compounds, which contain heteroatoms in a later unit. Although aromatic compounds are relatively stable, they can be made to engage in reactions, primarily substitution reactions. Before we get there, though, we need to learn the structural foundations of aromaticity and aromatic compounds. So first and foremost, we'll start with benzene, which is the prototypical aromatic compound, and learn how to recognize benzene rings in larger structures, as well as other related aromatic and heteroaromatic structures. Although we will talk very little about nomenclature in this course, we will introduce these terms ortho, meta, and para related to substituents linked to a benzene ring. This will help us visualize and draw substituents in various possible orientations around a benzene ring. So we'll talk about that. We'll look at the pi molecular orbitals of benzene. This will help us understand why benzene and other aromatic compounds are so darn stable. We'll also learn a pretty straightforward mnemonic, geometric mnemonic device for drawing the pi molecular orbital energy diagrams of aromatic hydrocarbons. It's called the frost circle. We'll learn how to determine using four simple criteria whether a molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. We'll dig into anti-aromaticity, which is a special class of very unstable cyclic conjugated molecules. We'll dig back into resonance, particularly with aromatic heterocycles, learning how to draw resonance forms of aromatic heterocycles, drawing on our knowledge of electron donating and withdrawing groups. We'll see why the benzylic position is relatively special, why benzylic intermediates are relatively stable, and make a connection to allylic systems. And we will talk a little bit about electron density in substituted benzenes, seeing how donating and withdrawing groups modulate electron density in substituted benzenes, and how that manifests both in the shapes of pi molecular orbitals and their energies, as well as resonance forms. And this is going to be really important, again, as we move into reactions of aromatic and heteroaromatic compounds where the distribution of electron density is going to be our guiding light in predict predicting how these reactions occur. The prototypical aromatic compound is benzene, C6H6, and you can see a structure for benzene right here. Each carbon in benzene has a hydrogen attached to it. Don't forget that there are six hydrogens in this structure. And so each carbon has sp2 hybridization, and this is worth verifying that the hybridization of each of those carbons is sp2. There are derivatives of benzene in which we replace one or more of these hydrogens with some other group. Two examples of those derivatives are shown here. Toluene is methyl benzene, where one of the H's has been replaced with the methyl group, and xylenes are uh, benzenes in which two of the H's have been replaced with two methyl groups. This in particular is orthoxylene in which those methyl groups are in a 1-2 or adjacent relationship. Benzenes are known as arenes. Uh, the phenyl group, as we'll see shortly, um, is another word for a benzene group. And you may hear the term aryl group as well to refer to aromatic groups within molecules. So keep these terms in mind. And benzene rings are ubiquitous in organic compounds. So three examples of pharmaceuticals are shown on this slide, and the benzene rings in these compounds are highlighted. These actually also contain aromatic heterocycles, and we'll return to those a little bit later. So here, for example, Zoloft, antidepressant. We've got two benzene rings highlighted in yellow there. Prilosec, or omeprazole, is a heartburn uh, medication, I believe. Uh, it's a proton pump inhibitor. There's its benzene ring. This ring is actually fused to another ring, which is interesting. We'll talk about that as well. Plavix, clopidogrel, has an aromatic ring right here. So aromatic rings are ubiquitous, and they're very common in crude oil. The aromatic nucleus is so stable that we can get benzene out of crude oil for instance, and so these come up a lot. A little bit of nomenclature here with benzenes. Simple substituted benzenes are named using benzene as the parent name, so chlorobenzene, nitrobenzene, ethylbenzene. When the substituent is relatively small, this is the way we name those. 
if the, the benzene ring is attached to a longer chain of carbons, we name that benzene ring as a phenyl substituent. You're seeing that here highlighted in orange in 2-phenyl octane, where the phenyl substituent is imagined as substituting at carbon 2 of this larger octane chain. And again, you won't be expected to name molecules at all in this course, but appreciating this nomenclature will help you as you're reading and exploring organic chemistry, so on and so forth. Some benzenes do have important common names, and you're going to hear me use these names on a regular basis, so they're worth learning, and you'll get familiar with them as you see these compounds over and over again. We've already encountered toluene. Hydroxybenzene is known as phenol or phenol. Methoxybenzene is anisole. Aminobenzene, aniline. Carboxybenzene or benzene carboxylic acid is known as benzoic acid. We also have benzaldehyde with an aldehyde group linked to the benzene ring. Acetophenone is uh, another name for phenyl methyl ketone. And then styrene, which is uh, essentially uh, ethenyl or vinyl benzene, is commonly known as styrene. So you'll see these names used throughout our discussions of aromatic compounds throughout the course. The terms ortho, meta, and para are used to designate the carbons of a benzene ring either in relation to a substituent or the relative positions of two substituents with respect to each other. So what do we mean by this? Well, benzene's got quite a few carbons, right? And if we look, for example, at ortho xylene, there are three different ways those methyl groups could be arranged around the carbons of the benzene ring. Here they're in a 1-2 relationship, but we could also have a 1-3 relationship with the second methyl group linked here, or a one for relationship with the second methyl group linked here. And it's helpful to have terms to distinguish between those possibilities. Now we absolutely could and we often do use 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4 to designate these relationships. That's a little more formal um, and a little bit harder to visualize if you're not numerically inclined. So the terms ortho, meta, and para have been developed to um, make these a little more human friendly, so to speak, we might say. Ortho corresponds to a 1-2 relationship between substituents or positions on the benzene ring, meta to a 1-3 relationship, and para to a 1-4 relationship. And I should add that these terms are only used in the context of benzene rings. Other aromatic heterocycles and even polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and other types of aromatic hydrocarbons, you won't see these terms. You'll see the numbers typically used instead. This picture breaks down how we think about it in relation to a substituent R. So here's the R substituent. It's linked at this orange carbon. This is really just an FYI. You'll, you may never come across this term, but the carbon that the substituent is linked to is known as the ipso carbon. The carbons next door, the two positions with respect to R, are called the ortho carbons. The three positions in red are the metacarbons, and the four position is the paracarbon. So notice that there are two orthocarbons, these two positions, the two and five positions, we might say, two and six positions, rather, uh, we might say. The three and five positions are the meta positions, and there's only one para position, the four position, right here. So this is how we think about ortho, meta, and para in relation to a single substituent, R. We can also use these terms for relationships between two substituents. So orthoxylene, for example, we've already seen. That's a 1-2 relationship between these two methyl groups. The term ortho designates that. When those methyl groups have a 1-3 relationship, we're looking at metaxylene. And when those methyl groups have a 1-4 relationship, we're looking at para. Xylene. So we use these terms a lot, particularly as we get into reactions and think about different constitutional isomers that could be formed in reactions of benzenes.